Now, you'll know our next guest as Coronation Street's Eileen Grimshaw. But away from the cobble, Sue Cleaver has experienced her very own shocking storyline. Yeah, this happened just in July, just gone. Uh, Sue contracted life-threatening sepsis uh, caused by an underlying kidney infection. Fortunately, she was rushed to hospital just in time. And today is World Sepsis Day. She's here alongside Dr Range. Um, just reading this about you, I was like, oh, my goodness, you poor thing. So it happened so quickly. It was so serious. Um, when did you think something was wrong? That's the problem. I didn't really take it seriously. I suffer, like many people, with IBS. And I thought, oh, I'm having a flare-up of IBS. Did you was... at work? You were yeah, on the I was at... Yeah, I was working and I'd gone in on the Tuesday and then late in the afternoon I said, are you going to see me in this scene? Because I'm really not feeling great and, you know, I just need to go home and sleep. And, you know, my, my side was sore. And then I came back in the next morning at half seven. We were shooting all day and it was the hottest day of the year. And I was on set with a hot water bottle, shaking. And Melanie Hill turned to me and she said, Sue, look at your feet. And my feet were just blue and purple and all the goosebumps on my arms. And, it, and how were you feeling at that in point? In pain, in yeah. pain and freezing cold. Um, so I went home after lunch. I got into bed. I had socks on, leggings, a dressing gown. On the hottest day of the year. And thinking, oh, my God, not only have I got really bad IBS, I've caught the flu now. Yeah. So paracetamol, got into bed, tried to go to sleep. And my husband, who also works on Corey, was on a night shoot and he happened to ring me. And he said to his colleagues, I'm, I'm, something's not right. I can't hear what she's saying because her teeth are chattering so much. He said, I'm going to drive home, just cover for me, I'm going to drive home. He came back and I was in bed and he said, I was just shaking, but still going, it's all right, it's the flu, I've taken, antibiotics, I've mm. taken ibuprofen and paracetamol, just let, I just want to sleep and I'll be fine in the morning. And he rang our daughter-in-law, who's a paramedic. Thank goodness. And she said, get her to hospital. So yes. I still felt like a fraud. Yes. But then I got there and they said my temperature was 39.9. Wow. And next minute, that was it. And I didn't know I had sepsis until the next day in the ward when the... And what did they do came. when you say they took you they in? They straight away took me, took me straight through to the recess area and immediately on fluids and antibiotics. At that point, they still didn't know what caused it, but they did that. There's an hour window, isn't there, mm. of opportunity? <coughs> Just and they an hour around, is it? Well, the aim is to try and institute... Once you've diagnosed sepsis, is to try and institute a bundle of care within an hour. So it doesn't mean you have an hour to treat it. Mm -hmm. It basically means that we try to get everything done to improve your chances. So the more now, we're talking about it, um, what previously would have been referred to as Blood poisoning. Yes, so it has previously been referred to as septicemia, blood poisoning. Sepsis is essentially an overwhelming response to potentially any infection. And when you get an infection, your immune system kicks in and fights it off. You may or may not need antibiotics to help. But for some reason, and particularly with some infections like the ones that cause meningitis or group B strep in babies or urine and kidney infections or pneumonia, the immune system potentially could go into overdrive and start to actually damage the body. And that's what sepsis is. Sepsis affects around a quarter of a million people, we think, in the UK every year. It still kills over 50,000 people every single year. That's more than say, breast, bowel and... 120 people a day. Prostate yeah. cancer combined, <clears throat> exactly. But I think we have to put it into perspective. If you look at the total number of infections that happen, there's millions every single year. Sepsis is actually a small proportion, but... 50,000 people is still a lot of people. Mm. And that's yeah. why people well, need to so be So you aware. could have been one of those people. Did, w when they were able to, you know, finish the diagnosis, why was your blood poisoned? What was going on? I think it was purely from the, the kidney infection was 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 very severe. Um, I was in which is why you nights, had the pain, which was it? the pain. So it wasn't my IBS. Mm. And it's just I think it's uh, the biggest lesson for me is that we we stride on through life, don't we? We, we? we know, you know, we've got commitments and we kind of just put up and get on with things and that's a big mistake. And slightly make excuses. Oh, it's just Oh, it's blue. fine, it's fine. It's no, just it's this. just this, it's just yeah. this. And it's like you're so aware of, you know, upset, upsetting filming for everybody. I mean, it and... must have crossed your mind a lot during that time if your daughter-in-law hadn't said to your husband, get her to hospital now, or I... you'd resisted. You well, I was really... I, all I wanted to do was sleep. And, I, I mean, if... if he hadn't come home and I'd gone to sleep, what would have happened? The outcome may have been very, very different for you. Mm. And how serious... I mean, obviously, it's fatal, but it damages your organs. I mean, even yeah. if you survive there it after sometimes, effects. there are after effects. Yeah, yeah. so uh, the thing about sepsis is the earlier you treat it, the better your outcome is, so the less likely you are to 
to experience any organ damage or tissue damage, and the less likely you are to die from it, which is why we say as soon as it's diagnosed, get that bundle of care in ideally within an hour. That's okay. oxygen, fluids, antibiotics, yeah. measuring certain things. People who do survive, up to 50% of survivors experience what we call post-sepsis syndrome, which can last anywhere between 6 to 18 months. Have you, have you felt that? Yeah, it's, it took a, it's taken me quite a long time to get better, which I was surprised at. So, I've, you know, I was sort of bed rest for a couple of weeks. But, yeah, horrific nightmares, yeah. Of really strange nightmares of being shot or having a, a noose around my neck and having to jump over a ravine. And, mm. and also, um, I don't have a sweet tooth at all, not interested, and that's all I wanted for about three weeks, just craving cakes, mm. pastry, custard, everything I would never eat. And were you Why tired? would that be, Doctor? Yeah. Mm. Well, we're not really sure. A, a part of it is that the treatment that you get for sepsis can affect your body in lots of different ways. Your immune system takes a bit of a kick, so therefore you might be slightly more risk for other illnesses and infections in the period after getting over sepsis. Um, some people that go to intensive care, there's a post-intensive care syndrome that happens as well. It could be related to that. Your body has just basically been through a lot. Talking about um, things being related, that young lad, Jack Webster, in, the, um, in Coronation mm. Street, there was a sepsis storyline with him, shocking. Mm. Was that related, was that because of you or was that independent? No, no, that's it's nothing, wild, that's nothing yeah. to, to do with me at all. No, yeah. no, not at all. It's actually off the back of that storyline that uh, there's an organisation called the UK Sepsis Trust has launched a campaign today called Schools Against Sepsis. Mm. And that is all about educating children and their families about what to look out for. OK, what? so what do we look out for? So, um, it's, it's quite easy. So there's slightly different signs for children and babies than it is for adults. We'll go through the adult sort of signs to look out for. And it's quite... It's a mnemonic is sepsis, so S. The first S stands for slurred speech or confusion. The E stands for extreme shivering... Which um, had, uh, yeah. ..or muscle pain. Mm -hmm. The P stands for passing little or no urine. The other S stands for severe shortness of breath. The I is, I feel like I'm going to die or a sense of impending doom. Mm -hmm. And the final S is skin being discoloured or mottled. So if you've got Which you had, and those symptoms... And you felt short of breath on your way to the hospital. On the way to the hospital, I started going, I'm, going, oh my God, I'm having a panic attack yeah, as well yeah. now. <laughs> the, the point about sepsis is there's no one specific sign. There is no one particular test that will definitely say you have it. But if you've got signs of an infection, so you're unwell, you may or may not have a temperature. Remember, babies, their temperature can go down as well as up. If you're unwell, you've got those sorts of symptoms, then you need to pick up the phone and say to a healthcare professional, could this be sepsis? OK. Interesting, I'll just say about the awareness, how important it is. I mean, in the short time since I've had it, I mentioned it to, to a friend who, because of what happened to me, rang 111 because she wasn't feeling yeah. well and is in the same ward that I was in. Uh, yeah. So it really is important. Well, so thank you are you well enough... It. To go back to work? Yeah, I'm, I'm not until the end of the month. Um, I've, I've been away on a little holiday last week just to convalesce. You look you know, very, I've been very well. ill. Yeah. <laughs> you have been very ill. Yeah, been very, yeah I know, but yeah, I am. I'm, it, my short term memory, I had to go into work for three days because it was literally about six days away from transmission and it was like, I've got to do that. But um, it took me so long to learn the lines. I'm normally so quick and it was just mm -hmm. like, so it's taken a little while for everything to mm. get back to normal. But, yeah, I'm, I feel pretty much like my old self now. Good. Well, we're glad that you're here to tell us about thank it, because it could have been a lot worse. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice and to And, Dr see you. Ranch, thank you very much. And thank you. We'll put those um, symptoms, shall we, on yep. our and website? Yeah, and we've got our own... Uh, we've got a little video that we've made for TM that we'll put on social media today Brilliant. as well, talking about sepsis. That's on the app. Thank you. Continue thank you. to get thank well, you. Sue. Thank, thank you very much indeed.